fifth grade. This is when we are easing out of those elementary years and heading full speed ahead into the big leagues. Let's see how that first year went for us. If you're new here, I'm Ryan, a Christ following wife and a homeschool mom to three boys. Here we talk all things homeschool and we will learn together how to use our roles as wife, mom, teacher, and homemaker in order to glorify God. So fifth grade is kind of that in between year where you're still in elementary, but you're kind of in middle school. Um, and so that line's kind of blurred. And I think for good reason, I think this is a year for us where we just did a lot of, okay, let's kind of start shifting and see what you're ready for and what you're not. And it was a lot of growth on my part as a mom and on my son's part. Um, as a 10 year old, he will be 11 soon. He's kind of on that younger end of fifth grade, but it was overall a really good year for us. This was a year where we had to do a lot of adapting. We had a very busy year and I just had to kind of loosen the reins a little bit. One, just out of necessity, because with four kids, for some reason to me, that was a number I was just like, whoa, like things have got to kind of look different. I don't have time to spend all day with you and your three brothers. Like <laughs> we've got to do some stuff a little different. So he, took a little more independent responsibility of his work, um, which he actually wanted to do. And like I said, it was a necessity. And so some of these things I had to kind of take a back seat and let him kind of teach himself. And then I just kind of double check to see, okay, is he actually learning this stuff or do I need to step in and help? And surprisingly, those times that I've had to step in and help are fewer and farther between than I thought they would be. Um, also we are not completely done with any of these curriculums that I'm going to talk about today. And that is because we are year round homeschoolers. So we don't really change out our curriculum until August, July, August, somewhere around there. So if we do finish them, we just set them down and don't pick up a new curriculum for that subject until the new school year. But because of how things played out this year, we'll be schooling all through the summer, most likely, but we've done enough of these curriculums that I can kind of tell you you know, we're far enough into it that I know if it worked or if it didn't. Now, this was also another big year, just kind of in growth for him, not just as a student, um, but in his character too. For some reason, something happened in fifth grade. And I don't know if this is normal. This is my first to hit this grade. But all of a sudden, he just became a little more careless and a little, I don't want to say lazy, but kind of lazy. He just would kind of halfway do things and it didn't really bother him. And he's always been my kid who just kind of wants to please everyone. And so he would just kind of go along with the flow. And I know those kids can be dangerous too. I was one of them um, because you think, oh, they're doing everything they're supposed to do, but you can do everything you're supposed to do and still have a heart that is not right. So um, I think it was just kind of a gift actually to see this kind of side come out of him so that I knew what to address but we're making it, we're making it work. <laughs> and so here is what he used this year and what we thought about it. So in math, he used Saxon, which is what we've used from day one with him. He's used it from kindergarten all the way on up. He just wrapped up or is wrapping up, um, math six, five with Saxon. He loved it this year, this year. So starting in fourth grade, so math five, four for Saxon, it completely shifts how it is done. Kindergarten through third grade is one fat book and then a bunch of worksheets and a teacher, like it's scripted what the teacher says, all this stuff. Starting in fourth grade, it is not scripted. It's more of just a regular textbook style. And last year we still, I kind of sat down and still walked him through it. This year, since he was used to that format, I said, we're going to try something new because I've got to loosen some reins because I have way too many things going on. And so I said, I want you to try to teach yourself the lesson and then do the lesson practice where you practice the concept that you just learned. And if you get it all right, and I think you understand it, then I'm not going to teach you anything. And then when I grade his work, if I see there's something he's missing over and over again, then we'll work on it. Um, but by and large, he taught himself this year and it was fantastic. And like always with Saxon, we did adapt. We did not do every single problem. We did not do every single um, mental math warm up because Saxon will take you all day if you do every single part the way that it's supposed to be done. But it so, so works for us and he's growing in leaps and bounds and is finally liking math again. Last year with the change in how the math layout was, 
he was like, I don't think I like math anymore. <laughs> but now that he's used to it and likes teaching himself, he doesn't hate it as much. So for writing this year, we used Essentials in Writing. This was our first year ever using that. We used the DVDs. And so again, I did very little in the way of teaching. And the first half of the year was more focused on just grammar. And then the second half of the year, they eased you into more of that writing side of it. So now he's full on into composition. And so he doesn't like it as much as the grammar side because the grammar side was just a bunch of worksheets mostly. And this, it's now like he has to sit and like write stuff, but I've seen him grow a lot in creativity and in structure for sure. Um, so I think I really like this program. I mean, we have some left still in it, but I really think we might try it again next year. Um, it is very gentle. At first I'm like, oh, this is not enough for him. But as I watched, it's really effective. And I think because it's so gentle, he doesn't get overwhelmed because writing does not come naturally to him. For spelling, we use spelling workout. Again, I don't even know what year this is for us. I think he's used it since first or second grade. So he's been using this for a long time and it is just basic. It's worksheets and a spelling test at the end of the week. Like there's nothing fancy about it, but that's how we like to do spelling and it's still working. For handwriting this year, we switched it up and let him use the good and the beautiful handwriting. Um, I would give this a solid C <laughs> and the only reason is he loved the fact that there was drawing involved almost every day, drawing or um, some sort of like hands-on thing like that. He loved that part of it, which is good. I don't mind him doing that kind of stuff, but I feel like I want something next year that is a little richer. I feel like the actual writing they had to do and copy and whatever was just kind of went, 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 like it wasn't that great. Um, so I'm going to look for something a little richer, I think for next year, but maybe somehow try to figure out how to still continue the drawing aspect. Cause he really liked that. I'm going to go quickly over these next three because they are also being done by my third grader. So we will talk about these again, but for science, we did apology as land animals. Um, we are huge apology of hands. That's all I've got to say. So we did do things a little bit backwards, which is working out great for my third grader, but I feel like my fifth grader, it's kind of weird. Um, when we first started Apologia in first grade, we were in a co-op and we just did whichever one they were doing, but it made it to where he was doing human anatomy, I think in like second grade. And that's one of the ones that you should really wait till you're older to do. Um, and so I feel like he kind of got these backwards, but I mean, it's still, there's plenty of stuff in the land animals one, which is one of the first ones you should actually do. There's still plenty of stuff for him to learn in there and they look forward to science every day. And we love that we made it this year a group effort um, just to kind of condense our workload. We made it to where instead of everyone having their own notebooking journals, he and his brother shared and they just kind of split the work and it has worked out amazingly. For sunlight, we did level C or are doing level C, which sunlight, their core is history, Bible and literature, if you're not familiar with that. And we love it. I do think next year he will be ready for a little bit more of a challenge um, because there's no like test worksheets, um, anything like that, um, at least in level C, but I think in level D, they give you some more options of things you can use, um, for more of a challenge. And I think he'll be ready for that next year. Um, we've had plenty of good conversations over our sunlight and I really do think he learned through it, but I think he's just ready for that next step, but it did allow a lot of time for rabbit trails and Hey mom, I saw they were using a catapult here. How does a catapult really look? And we went and YouTube videos on how a catapult works. The read alouds were amazing this year. We loved them so much. I just think that will forever be the best part of our day is our read aloud time. And then their Bible this year was just very straightforward Bible and memory verses. But I love that because we just read a chunk of scripture and talked about it. And really that's what I like to do with the Bible. I don't know. I don't like real fluffy stuff. I like good questions asked about God's word and then answering those questions by using God's word. As far as reading, he used Sunlight's fifth grade readers and there were a lot of good variety of books. They used, you know, some that had to do more with what we were learning, you know, the medieval times and stuff like that. And then there were some that really had nothing to do with it, but he really enjoyed them. Like the donut fix was one that he really liked this year. Um, and there was just like a very wide, range of books, some a little more like fun and silly, some dealing with some pretty heavy stuff. Um, some were just, like I said, more along whatever we were studying at the time. 
But again, they made him ask really good questions. So it wasn't just reading comprehension. It wasn't just, oh, were you listening or were you, you know, paying attention as you were reading? But it was also, do you think this was the right choice for him to make or not? And why do you think that? Do you think that was pleasing to the Lord? Do you think that was morally right? And I love when they ask those kind of questions because it makes you really think about what you're reading and not just think of it as a story. So this was a year of learning, of growth, of adapting, of transition. Um, and ultimately, it was just a good life lesson year. We had a lot go on this year. Um, and I've just discovered some years are like that. Some years are just kind of like easy breezy, beautiful cover girl. No, just kidding. <laughs> They're just easy breezy. But some years you just have a lot of life going on. And I feel like more than anything, he got a lot of life learning done this year. Um, we had to deal with, you know, what happens when mom and dad are sick and we both had COVID and had it pretty bad. <laughs> um, and our kids had it for like one day, they had a fever and then they were back up on their feet. And you know, what do we do when that happens? What do we do when we have a new baby in the house and you're the oldest and you have to kind of help out more than your other brothers and it doesn't seem quite fair. And um, what do you do in the middle of a move when you're dealing with really bad homeowners who are owning the home that you're buying? And, you know, <laughs> we had death in the family. We had just a wide gamut of things happen to us this year, but it was such a good lesson and just how to deal with life. And that's what homeschool is all about. They had to be right here with us, learning those things right alongside us and watching how we dealt with those things. And I think that was priceless. So that is how our curriculum was this year. This is going to be um, three weeks worth of curriculum reviews before I release our curriculum choices for next year. So we have this week is fifth grade, next week will be third grade, and then I will share my preschooler stuff. And then we will do the same thing as we reveal what we're using next year. We'll go fifth, third, and preschool. So do not miss that to be on the lookout for that. And let me know down below, what are some of your favorite fifth grade or middle school curriculum that you've ever used? And thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.